there, friends. We are back talking about component four. Now, the question that I'm looking at today is around, it's in your generation and use of assessment data. <clears throat> and it's really in three parts. It says, what did your analysis of the results of the formative assessment tell you about where the children as a class are in relation to the unit objectives? Notice analysis is in pink. For me, that's a huge word. Uh, any candidate support provider that's trying to help you to see the difference between descriptive writing and analytical writing and reflective writing is going to bring this to your attention. That they, we are wanting to hear you from the assessor standpoint, analyzing the results of this formative assessment, not describing what the formative assessment is at this point. We're wanting you to tell us from the results page where you put the evidence out in the results part of on the evidence, we're wanting you to tell us, what are you noticing? Think like a doctor, like break it down as if you're looking at blood work or you're looking at an MRI and you're really kind of digging for something. When you analyze these results, what do you notice? What went really well in the instruction? But where do you need to go next? Like, where are we going to veer to next? So sometimes this is difficult for teachers if their formative assessment isn't powerful enough on the analytical side. Like the lens of it is kind of like they either got the answer right or they got it wrong. It, there wasn't depth in a more open-ended way for you to really see what they were thinking. It's really, really hard for you to analyze in that case. So if you're struggling badly with this particular piece to this question, it may be that the formative is wrong and it's not analytical, you can't analyze it. The other reason why you might struggle with this question is if the formative doesn't match the unit objectives. So the formative has got to be connected back to whatever you said those objectives were. It doesn't always connect to every one of the objectives, but it, it typically, connects to those objectives pretty closely. So if you're not connected to the objectives and then you're just kind of analyzing it just to analyze, it may be fluffy feeling to the assessor and uh, kind of out of alignment with the unit as a whole. And you'll watch other videos that I have out here on YouTube or if you're inside of my component for course, where I really break it down and show you how these questions stack on top of each other and how they connect to the rubric, you'll understand that even better. What patterns, trends, or outliers did you see in the results? Again, the assessor is wanting you to go deep. They're wanting to get in your brain and hear your thinking. They don't want surface of you just saying, here's the pattern, here's the trend, here's the outliers, and that's it. They want you to go back to the evidence here. They want you to say, oh, when you look at the evidence and you point to what it is, being very specific in your writing, that takes the assessor back over to the evidence to see your thinking. So if you feel like in this part of the question, you're not going back to the evidence, you just put the evidence in your paper and you never looked at it again, then again, you're not doing what the assessor is going to have to score you on which is watching you find those patterns, trends, and outliers. Let's go back to the doctor in the blood work. The reason the doctor does the blood work is to see patterns, trends, and outliers to try to diagnose what is going on. What is the next step? Will he or she pull more blood? Will they run more tests uh, with imaging? Like what will happen? Same thing with you in this unit. You see a pattern. You see a trend, a pattern, maybe the F, you know, 50% of the kids are missing the same question. You may see a trend that the students are all answering in very low level um, ways and they're not connecting back to the objectives at all with their thought processes. So they really don't understand the objectives. You might see an outlier where, um, you know, it's 100% of the kids can do one thing but then something else they should have been able to do because they were 100% on that, they're not able to do. 
So that's, you just really need to remember in this part of the question, go back to the evidence and try to find those three things. And finally, in this question, they're asking what other factors did you take into account as you analyzed and interpreted the results? Once again, that those words in pink put you in an analytical voice, in an analytical frame of mind. It's you dissecting, like picking fleas off a dog, you know, like pick this and pick this and pick this, like really interpreting what the results mean and what your next steps have to be. You know, and so we're we're trying to watch you go through this unit as a teacher. You've through the group profile really understood some of what they needed or where they were. You're you've pulled your objectives, you're going through the unit, you've got your formative. After your formative, you're going to shift the instruction due to the results of it, gain some more feedback off the students through self-assessments. And then voila, in the end, you'll have a summative that you'll get to compare back to the formative to see if the adjustments and tweaks you made from analyzing your practice in between really worked. So this is a very loaded question. I know. I break this thing down from candidates in my programming into very small pieces to try to put these on charts to figure them out. But the things I just told you in this video, if you really hang on to those, you will do well in trying to answer the this question. All right. Come over to TracyBryantStuckey.com if you want to see any of the other resources I have. As always, I love spending time with you. I'll see you soon. Bye now.